All right, everybody, another hot Cine Summit highlight coming to you. This was one of my favorites from Matt Workman. We're going to talk about the backlight, how to use it, where to put it, what it can do for you. You know, all, we're going to get into it. It's a, it's a nice little small piece of a bigger, you know, almost hour presentation that Matt put on, which I think is like one of the main ones that you can go and take and just improve your, your cinematography tonight if you, if you, uh, uh, took notes and implement what he talked about. Uh, before that, let me remind you, as usual, for those who uh, have not been to the blog yet and got your free tips from Jerome Keith, three sweet tips that you can go and do every day on every shoot, no matter what is your shooting. These are three essential things you got to do. All you got to do is click on this button right here. Yes, send me my video. Put in your email, and we'll get that out to you. So, without further ado, we're going to jump into it. Remember, these are the entire Cine Summit, uh, all the sessions. You can it can be found right here on this site, vip.bigleaguecinesummit.com. Today, we're going to jump into Matt Workman's uh, presentation, which was about beauty lighting and how to really nail that uh, uh, that look of that we see all the time. So that is right here. That's that's what we're going to be talking about: beauty lighting, the secret to commercial. Beauty. We're gonna give you a little snippet of that. Uh, something that I, uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, maybe didn't get enough emphasis, but it was a big, big point. So I'm gonna highlight that right now. So let's jump into it, and uh, we'll discuss it. All right. I guess the takeaway from this that you may not be doing is um, how big that that fill is. Like you really need to aim to get that fill really large. Like you might be bouncing off a four by beadboard. You might be bouncing off of, right, right. or going directly as your fill light. And you really just want to make that big. That's the key. You just want it to be really big. And you want to get it as close as you can. You know, you could even move this. I'm not going to attempt to move it. You could move it like right in front of them. Got it. So even though it's coming a little bit off to the side, it's so large that it just kind of feels like it's coming from the entire room uh, a bit. Is that correct? Is that safe to say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say one... One thing that I've called this type of keying is called the uh, the invisible key light because you end up having almost no shadow. There you go. That's what I was um, getting at. Yes. Right, right. And and you'll see that in narrative to some degree. This is definitely not a narrative uh, lighting setup here. I wouldn't consider it one just because it's so inflexible. Like they can't really move very much. Got it. But when you're going, that's a whole other subject even. But when you're going for like these big natural key, like you know, key lights where you're like you don't want to feel like there's a light in the room. This is, this is one approach to do it. And this is, again, this setup is for a medium shot. You know, we're not talking feet here. This would kind of work, but I would do it a little differently. But th we're, for this whole, this whole thing, we're really just going for that nice medium shot, which is, again, going to be, in commercials, it's probably going to be a large amount of what you're shooting. You know? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, great. That's good. Let's, let's move it along. Cool, cool. And this last part, really yeah. simple. Uh, this is our sun, right? So we're, this is the ambient. This is the sky over here. And then this is our our sun. It's the backlight. There's really not much to say about it. Again, everybody can do it different ways. If you have a Kino, use a Kino. If you have a 1K Fresnel, if you have an LED, just put it back to the backlight. It's not as important because it's not on the face. It's really just, you know, hitting the shoulders, hitting the hair. But a lot of the times you need it. And that's, that's part of the trick. And I'll show you again, the behind the scenes that they use this a lot. I mean, there's, there's like, you're, you're putting a hard, hard backlight, like two stops over, three stops over sometimes, and then just using extremely soft front light. And that, rate, that, that technique pretty much always looks good. You know, when, when I was doing music videos, that's, that's what we were doing. And if you did that, if you could manage to get that light on the ceiling somehow with, with the time you had in the budget, yeah. and, you, and you did this type of keying and, you know, and, and the dance looked good and everything else, you were there. That was it. That, this is what we were trying to do. Because you, in music videos, you're doing so many setups, at least the ones I was doing. You were doing so many setups that you could only really, you had to have a, you had to have a plan. You could really only go for like certain aesthetics. You didn't have a lot of time to play around. So a lot of the times we would just get in there, backlight, really soft front light, and it's going to look good. Uh, a couple of questions. One, does the backlight need to come uh, as, you know, as much as possible directly behind them? Or can it come off to the, from the side? Uh, assuming you, you know, let's assume you just have a stand, you can't boom it for whatever reason, and you can't put it right behind the head. It has to come a little bit more off from the side of the set. So that's question number one. And question number two, you started off by saying that the backlight is hard and the front light is soft in the, for this type of a look. So mm -hmm. uh, can you just go into that a little bit of, of uh, you know, hard to, uh, to me, I understand, means that you don't have anything, anything large in front of it to diffuse it. It's not a large source. Um, so yeah, if, if you could just fill that in for us. Well, as far as the position for it, I would say that 
ideally you want it to be directly behind them. Um, I mean, got it. In in not in not every case, but a lot of the times you wouldn't even want it at an angle. You would want it literally directly behind your head, shooting right. back towards you, like that like that sunset photo. Right. If you could, of course. Okay. And you know, there's certain situations uh, where you can do that. And honestly, when you're in a commercial setting where the the director and the production designer might value your input and you're designing the set, you might design the set so, so that you have those opportunities like shooting through glass or shooting through something transparent. But you know, in most cases, you, you don't have that ability. Um, if you come from the sides, it's a different effect. I mean, then, then it becomes an edge. It's like more of a rim light and edge light. And you might add those on top of it, but it's a different effect. You know? so, uh, I, so you would put that into a different uh, topic of discussion and what we're covering here. So, so the position is quite important, straight f- directly from behind. I think so. Um, again, it's this. It gets a little bit subjective. I think with right, that, sure. as long as there's some sort of backlight, that that really helps sell the glow. And to get to your point about this being flat, because you know, I, you know, I, I hear that. I, I do hear that when this type of lighting happens. You know, like if say you tell your gaffer we're going to do this, like okay, it's a very flat light. It's like it's true, but um, it's a trick that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In but this some, case, it's beautiful. So that that you know, I'm okay with that. Uh, but yeah. But, but something that helps combat that, and it's what animators use um, quite frequently in their lighting, 3D animators, is that you backlight. And that fixes the flatness of it because it, it adds a nice glow around. It basically gives you a glowing outline around your subject. So just that is separating you from the background. Um, so the backlight, as you, if you place it like directly behind them, you end up with this kind of like nice, even glow. Uh, around them so that kind of helps combat the flatness of the lighting versus if you didn't have it you just did this big soft light and there's just a flat background yes this would be flat so the backlight helps with that beautiful okay okay so as you heard from matt uh you know some of these i don't really have much to add because they just nail it and they explain it so well but matt uh basically the, the points that i think you know he said it quickly and it might have gotten lost in there but the ratio, he says, you know, two, three stops over the what, whatever your, uh, whatever your, your key light is, right? So you got your key light just right, uh, it, you know, and this is going to be much hotter, and that's what's going to get you that glow when using that backlight. And also, he said that ideally he would like to have it directly behind, uh, and it's, you know, it will really give that look as opposed to coming from the side, which I think a lot of us do it from the side because. We don't have necessarily uh, the boom arm uh, available at the moment or it's just harder to get it set up because you, you do have to get it up high or boom it up there. So sometimes when we're doing an interview, you know, we got that backlight coming off from the side, which could be, you know, it's fine too. We're just hitting that, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of hair and shoulder light. But again, this is not so much for the, the interview. I don't think you do an interview with two or three stops over. That would be a little crazy. But uh, for this type of a style, where you got the, the commercial lighting and you want that kind of glow, you know, like you said, you're kind of mimicking the sun, um, and and that's what that'll do. But there was another point that he said that I really want to emphasize, uh, and that is that the combination of very soft front light and the hard backlight. So that's what it is. It's the two playing against each other. Um, so yeah, I think that is something that people can go and and. and you know, just implement right away, and it will definitely give you uh, a hot look. Uh, but don't forget, you also need a very soft front light, which means a big source. And maybe we will uh, do another highlight of the, of this presentation because there were so many good pieces in this. This was also like an uh, you know, almost an hour presentation. So as usual, you can hit up the the VIP dot dot com site and see the past uh, uh, sessions there. Uh, of course, you, you know you can uh, get the lifetime access if you wish to do so. And okay, so that is it for now, folks. Uh, see you when I see you.